I'm Michal Rick, together with Dr. Meir Steinbock. We are the co-directors of the Israel Winnicott Center. I'm glad and excited to open this evening in which we will announce the three winners of the Israel Winnicott Center International Award competition for clinical theoretical writing for 2017. The idea of the award was conceived about two years ago. Its purpose is to encourage mental health professionals with a psychodynamic, psychoanalytic orientation to describe the therapeutic process from their own original angle. Psychoanalysis and dynamic psychotherapy are in a process of losing ground around the world. We hope to create a focus of attraction to the discipline which we cherish and feel so attached to. The award is granted to two groups of therapists alternately. One year to young Israeli professionals with up to six years of experience in therapeutic work, and in the following year, in its international format, to experienced therapists from all over the world with six years or more of experience in therapeutic work. Last year, in its first year, the award was granted to a young Isra Israeli uh, social worker, Dr. Karen Mintz Malchi, for her original paper, So There Is No Help Save From The Witch. Lo mm. This year, in its second year, we moved to the international format of the award. We sent a call for applications to many organizations worldwide, including many psychoanalytic institutes and societies. Accordingly, we enlarged the award committee to include members from around the world in addition to the Israeli members, and now is the right moment to mention all the committee members. I'll start from our overseas friends. Professor Vincenzo Bonamino from Italy, Dr. Robert Grossmark from the USA, Angela Joyce from the UK, Sarah Nettleton also from the UK, Professor Joyce Slokower from the USA, and Professor Rudy Vermot from Belgium. And in Israel, Chagita Aroni, Dr. Dana Amir, Chayuta Gorevich, Sarah Kolker, Ani, Michal Rik, and Dr. Meir Steinbock. I want to thank from the bottom of my heart all the committee members for your readiness to join it, for your devoted and thorough reading of the papers and for the time so precious that you allocated for being involved in the competition. The process was intriguing and very, very instructive. We received 22 papers from Canada, France, Israel, Italy, the UK, and the US. The general feedback of the committee was that the standard of the papers was, was very high and that it was difficult to select. Six papers reached the second stage of the competition. Finally, three papers were chosen for the three first places. Uh, Chayuta Gurevich, uh, Meir Steinbock and myself will announce them in a few minutes and read the committee's arguments for their selection. This will be followed by Rachel Sofers, the winner of the first place lecture, and then Dr. Dana Amir's discussion of the, of the lecture. Last but not least, we hope for a lively, open discussion with the audience. Questions and comments can be made in Hebrew and we shall translate, don't hesitate. Um, we really hope that more and more mental health professionals worldwide will be informed about the possibility of submitting a paper to the Israel Winnicott Center Award. We ask all of you to join us in distributing this information. 
And we are currently thinking about possible ways of publishing the winning papers so that many people can get acquainted with them. So um, we shall now go to, the, uh, to announcing the winners and to reading the committee's arguments. And we shall start, uh, Mayor will start with the third place. <coughs> the third award goes to Dr. Osnatar L for her paper, Vicissitudes in Winnicottian Theory about the Origins of Aggression, which was presented to the Israeli Psychoanalytic Society. Dr. Osnatar L is a clinical psychologist and training and supervising psychoanalyst at the Israeli Psychoanalytic Association. Prior to her psychoanalytic training, she has been faculty at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Nowadays, Dr. Orel has private practice in Mevaseret Zion and teaches at the Winnicott Center. Dr. Orel has written a brilliant and deep introduction to Winnicott's Hebrew translation, False Self, True Self, and thoughtfully clarifying introductions to more papers in the book itself. <coughs> I will read now the committee arguments. This essay is a true and scholarly exploration of Winnicott's changing views of the origins of aggression and his final shift to a monistic view of psychic energy. This is a radical and bright attempt declaring clearly Winnicott intuitive ideas about this topic. Throughout his numerous papers, he never presented these ideas as a clear systematic theory. Assuming a monistic source for both aggression and love as the base of psychic functioning, <coughs> is it not only the, of crucial theoretical importance, but also has deep and far-reaching clinical implications. The writing is clear and elegant, and the reader is taken through a logical and well-argued progression of ideas. The author emphasizes the therapeutic importance of enabling a recognition of the relationship between aggression and primary life force, which is neither good or bad. This idea is illustrated with a clinical vignette in which the patient is helped to distinguish between destructive violence and aggression that is life-affirming. Usnat, Uzmenet. The second award goes to Dr. Alice Jones for her paper, Starvation and the Dead Baby. She's not here tonight. She's in Berkeley, California, but we sent her all the information. Dr. Alice Jones is a physician who practiced internal medicine before beginning training as a psychiatrist and psychoanalyst. She's a faculty member and a personal and supervising analyst at the San Francisco Center for Psychoanalysis and the Psychoanalytic Institute of North Carolina, uh, California, PINK. Dr. Jones has special interest in studying Winnicott's writing, focusing on regression to dependence in analysis. These ideas influence her theoretical and clinical work. 
Dr. Jones has published numerous papers in major psychoanalytic journals. She's also a known poet whose poetry books, Gorgeous Morning and Plunge, have received awards from the Poetry Society of America and the National Endowments for the Arts. Dr. Jones lives and practices in Berkeley, California. The committee's arguments. Following Green's concept of the dead mother, the author proposes the concept of dead baby. Not as the dead mother's baby, but rather a baby that has been through actual physical near-death situations in early life, manifested also in psychic deadness. This original concept is explored in the paper through the example of starvation during early infancy. Sensations of deadness are felt as actual mental states and hunger and being bitten are part and parcel of the psychic imprints of this early trauma. The author offers a complex and deep understanding of these situations both in psychoanalytic literature and in clinical examples. The author emphasizes the crucial need of these patients to be recognized as dead by the analyst. This acknowledgement renders a sense of real to these dead psychic states, which enables them a new aliveness. Beautiful clinical examples vividly capture the complexity of these situations in analysis, taking the reader into deep psychic pain that patient and analyst are involved in while working through these unbearable mental states. This new concept is crucially important as it enables the analyst to understand the de derivatives of such mental states and their actuality in the patient's psyche and to experience and contain that, quote, there is a constant dissolution, not only a dread of dissolution, end of quote. So the second prize goes to Dr. Alice Jones. We'll send it to her. The first award by majority of votes goes to Rachel Sofer for her paper an Allegiance to Absence, Phantom Pain and the Mirror Box. Rachel Sofer, LCSW, which is social worker, is board director, supervisor, and faculty of the National Institute for the Psychotherapies Training Institute, NIP, and faculty member of the Stephen Mitchell Center for Relational Studies. She is Senior Editor of Psychoanalytic Perspectives, a Journal of Integration and Innovation, and is in private practice in New York City. Rachel Sofer is a relationally trained psychoanalyst who has an interest in bridging the languages of relational and more classically object relational psychoanalytic theories. In addition, she teaches, writes, and presents on development within comparative psychoanalytic frameworks. She also has an article forthcoming entitled Language as Frame, the Grammar of the Autistic Contiguous Position. I will read the committee's arguments. Good psychoanalytic writing is to be treasured. When theory comes alive, as real lived human experience, and new clinical ideas open hither to unthought realms of human understanding, we are in the presence of not just good psychoanalytic writing, but a paper that is transformational. This paper, An Allegiance to Absence, Phantom Pain and the Mirror Box, is one such paper. An impactful beginning brings the reader into the powerful dynamics of working with terrible trauma, where the analyst is totally immersed in it. The analyst and patient shifts from atonement to a devastating sense of two-ness can be re-traumatizing. A world where holding, 
stretches the analyst beyond what is normally bearable. The writer seamlessly weaves together complex theory with real clarity and actual tenderness, a rare quality in psychoanalytic writing, so that the theory feels alive and human. Consequently, the ideas of absence, catastrophic aloneness, non-existence, and the negative become graspable as clinical realities. Dissociation, which is the most desperate and primal strategy for the survival of trauma, is creatively linked to the entirely new conception of the psychoanalytic space. The living metaphor of the mirror box where dissociated past loss and absence come to be lived and thus reintegrated into the self. Psychic phantom pain is a dissociated psychic state that sends signs of its pain to the rest of the psyche. The author proposes to borrow a medical method of treating phantom pain whereby the patient imagines the missing part through the aid of the mirror box and relates to it in a way that relieves the pain. This paper is singular in the author's creative connection between the somatic and psychic phenomena of pain in phantom pains, both in the delineation of its etiology and its clinical derivative, derivatives and consequences. In describing a clinical case, the writer leads the reader into the thicket of the ultimate clinical dilemma. If the patient comes to life, the treatment, the treatment will come apart. Deftly and sensitively negotiating this struggle between psychic life and death, we encounter the analyst's visceral incarnation of the patient's pain and the confrontation with the deepest and most terrifying counter-transference. An Allegiance to Absence, Phantom Pain and the Mirror Box is a paper that renders the reader's clinical work more depth, opening a new dimension of receptivity to the emergence of unthinkable anxiety and opening new ways of seeing our patients via vivid metaphor, astute clinical insight, and expertly rendered psychoanalytic theory. For these reasons, an allegiance to absence is more than worthy winner of this year's Israel Winnicott Center Award. <laughs> Rachel and Rachel and Dana, please. <laughs>